What's going on you guys? Nick Desjardins here. Welcome back to the channel Vibe Nick where we're doing tech and gadget reviews. Now before we get into this video, I just wanted to say, guys, we're doing this AirPods 3 giveaway to one of you. So if you want to find out how to enter and potentially win, click the link above or go into my channel and find the video there. Good luck guys. Now we got the Apple Watch Series 7 today. It's new. I know I'm a little behind, but better late than never. So let's dive into the Series 7, see what the upgrades are and kind of how it differentiates itself from the others. So with the Series 7, you do have the largest screen and display yet out of all of the past models. Now it has a 20% more screen area than the Series 6 and 50% more screen area than the Series 3. So if you have a Series 3, try to put that into perspective. It's kind of crazy. So with the much larger screen surface, you can just see more of what's going on. Now with my 7, I do have the 45 millimeter watch and with my Series 6, I went with the smaller option, which was your 40 millimeter. I do wish I had the larger one so I can kind of compare these better, but that's not the case. Now, when we hold both of them together, you can absolutely see the size difference. It's incredible, but which one should you choose? Well, if you have smaller wrists, maybe you want to go with the smaller watch. But again, if you can't see well and just want to see bigger text, then go with the bigger option. Now, adding on to the size, why is the bigger screen a plus? Well, you actually get a bigger display for your clocks. So with the default clock, it has, you know, the numbers going all the way around like an average clock. But as the hours pass, these numbers will enlarge and shrink. Pretty cool. But there's so many more options to choose from, which we're not going to dive into. But if you want to see which ones are my favorite or which ones I thought were the coolest, leave a comment below and we can make a review happen. So when you do get your Apple Watch for the first time, it's going to ask you what text size you want. Do you want the small font? Do you want the medium or do you want the large? Now the larger does seem to be better because you can simply see more. But if you're texting using the calculator or you're simply just working in any of the apps, you can confidently hit the right button because it's larger. Now, a small upgrade here is the texting options, right? The three that have already been around is your swiping, so you can swipe around on the keyboard, make a word, and of course, turn it into a sentence. The second one is drawing it out, which I think, you know, it takes too long, but it's still a cool concept. And then the third one is talking through Siri. This is definitely the fastest and most efficient way, something I use literally every single day. So with those three, the Series 7 actually added a fourth which is your keyboard that you can type on. It's nothing crazy. It should have been around since the beginning, but at least they added it now. Out of those four, I'd say my favorite is the swiping. It's kind of crazy how you can swipe around and it gets your word right every single time. Or at least for me in the beginning, it has never gotten a word wrong. And for some reason, as we look at my Apple Watch, it's saying subscribe to my channel. I don't know guys, it's the Apple Watch talking. If you like what you're seeing, smash that subscribe and like button to join along and of course help me with the algorithm. All right, let's keep going. So yeah, it's not just the screen size or size in general that they upgraded, it's also the durability, the colors, and the battery. And yes, colors is more opinion based, but we'll still jump into that. So it has a thicker shell with a crack resistant front crystal making the 7 the most protected or at least let's hope so. But it is water resistant up to 50 meters so yes bring this in any water and if you're showering go ahead bring it in you can text in there and of course check the time if you need to. Something new though with the 7 is they added in IP6X dust resistance to complete the package. But listen to this, right? I've had the Series 6 for about a year now, and after the several dozen times I've dropped it, I've had no issues whatsoever. So I feel like they shouldn't have focused on the durability as much as they did on the 7, and maybe focused on another problem. So I guess with the new durability upgrade, this should last me an eternity, right? Or at least let's hope so. Knock on wood. All right, guys, so for colors, you do have many choices like the Series 6, but with the 7, they went with a few others. So you can go with the aluminum colors or the stainless steel. With aluminum, you can go with the blue, which is a lighter shade. That's the one I went with. Midnight, which is a darker, darker navy blue. Starlight, 
green. Green is the newest one out and probably the most popular. And then lastly, your product red. So you got some choices there. Then the second one is your stainless steel. So you can go with colors like silver or gold, but keep in mind, these are more expensive and they do scratch more. If you don't care about those two things, then maybe you wanna go with the stainless steel. Onto the battery life. So it seems to be pretty similar to the Series 6, but there is a difference, and I'm talking about the charging. So it gets 33% faster charging than the 6, but why? So with the previous models, they had the simple magnetic charging cable that could plug into a 5 watt USB charging adapter. With the Series 7 now, it has a fast charging magnetic USB-C cable to a 20 watt USB-C adapter. So it can go from 0% to 80% in 45 minutes. And I used to hate this fast charging things. I've talked about it in past products, but things are so advanced now. I'm trying to move away from hating on that. Maybe it's not so bad to do fast charging. I guess we'll only know when we see a dramatic change in the battery life. So personally, I only charge this through the night and I'm sure a lot of you can relate to that, right? You get ready for bed, you plug it in, you wake up the next morning, it's at 100% and you're good for the rest of the day. But let's say it does die in the day and you need a quick charge because you're going on errands, you're going to hang out with friends and you're not gonna be home for a while. Well. If you plug this in for like 15 minutes, you could get around 20 to 25% battery, give or take, which isn't a lot, but it should be enough to get you through whatever you're doing. Now let's get into some things that aren't new, but definitely important to talk about. So let's start with vitals, right? It's kind of crazy how you can check some of these vitals at the tap of a finger. The first one is your heart rate. You can check if it's low, high, what your you know resting heart rate is, and all of that good stuff. You can check your SpO2, which is your blood oxygen levels, which is a great thing to have as well. And then your one lead ECG or EKG, which is your electrocardiogram. You can check if you're in sinus rhythm, maybe a fib, or if you have some type of an irregular heartbeat. Now, this isn't always accurate. Sometimes it'll say poor reading, so try to stay as still as possible. And keep in mind, this isn't always accurate. It is not going to tell you if you're having a heart attack. So if you're having a lot of symptoms, you got a lot of chest pain, definitely seek medical help and go to the hospital. So yeah, all of these results are recorded and you can check it out in the fitness app on your iPhone and it's all organized, which is pretty cool. But for all my fitness people, they do have a fitness app so you can check out things for walking, running, diving, hiking, whatever it is, the list goes on, you name it. And it really tracks everything. So let's say we pick hiking, right? It goes three, two, one, it begins. And now it tells you how much time you've gone for how many calories you've burned so far, how many calories you've burned in total, how much distance you've gone, and how much elevation you've gone up that hill or mountain. Pretty cool. And at the end, you can see, you know, how well you've done. Then the last few are your activity rings for daily accomplishments and, you know, exercise and movement and how long you've been standing for, which is great. You know, it gives you rings throughout the day and just gives you more motivation. And the last one is sleeping, right? It tracks your sleep, tells you how long you've been sleeping for, how well you've been sleeping for. And I'm always skeptical about this. There's no way it can be 100%, but I guess we'll never know since we're asleep. Now, real quickly, we do have always on display, but for any of you that don't know what it is, it just simply keeps the screen on at all times. You don't have to turn your wrist at you. So if you want to check the time now, you can just keep your arm down below at your side or on your desk and just glance over. All right, now on to fall detection. I don't know if you've seen in the Apple Watch Series 7 commercials, they talk about fall detection and say, when you take a dump and you go down, the Apple Watch will be able to detect it and ask you if you need 911, or you can say, no, I'm okay. And this is kind of where the GPS and GPS cellular option come into play. So if you go with the GPS only option, it does mean you need your phone on you at all times and connected for things like phone calls, messages, and the fall detection to work. If you go with the GPS and cellular option, it means you can leave your phone at home 
you don't need it, right? This thing works as your own mini cell phone, so you can do phone calls, messages, and pretty much anything a cellular connection gets. Now, there is a $100 difference here. Of course, the GPS-only option is cheaper, and that's the one I went with just because I always have my phone on me. But if you have a family member or young kid who doesn't have a phone, you could get this for them, you know, to stay connected with the family and whoever else. Pretty cool. And it's cheaper than a cell phone. All right, look, there's a lot to talk about here, and I try to just dive into the important information, but of course, there's a lot more you can do. It's not even funny. Do I recommend the 7 over the past series? Honestly, yes. I mean, if you look at the 7 and 6, there's not that much of a difference, but since they're the same price, you might as well upgrade. Now, I'm super excited to see what the Apple Watch Series 8 brings. Hopefully, it's a much larger upgrade, but for now, let's just enjoy the 7. I hope you guys all enjoyed, right? I got a new part two coming up to extend this review, but for now, it is a wrap. Appreciate you guys for watching. Smash that subscribe and like button down below, and of course, comment below as well. That's it. Love you guys. See you in the next one. Peace out. Thank you.